It's a beautiful day in Murrieta, California, and today Justin and I are at 8-Bit Brewing. We've never heard of this place before, so we're really excited to try their beers. Justin, are you ready? Let's start this round of Let's Have Some Beer. Let's have some beer. So I'm here with Jeff, one of the owners of 8-Bit Brewing, and Jeff's going to tell us exactly how 8-Bit Brewing came to be. So Jeff, how did it all start? Well, it all started with uh, my brother's best friend brewing beer in the garage. Uh, he had moved out here from Texas, he was in video game design, he started brewing up beer and my brother was like, dude, this beer is good, we should sell it. My brother has an entrepreneur mindset, we grew up in a family run business, yet none of us had ever worked in a brewery or a restaurant before. But anyway, so we decided to start a brewery. It took a few years to get everything going. We contracted the thing ourselves, built it all out. Um, in the meantime, my brother had asked my his wife's twin sister to, if she wanted to be a partner in the company. She was like, yeah. She's a, a senior level designer for Treyarch, so she's a level designer for Call of Duty. So the nerdiness comes from that. Lamar as well, being a video game designer. He uh, created our logo. He does all our graphic design work and uh, also a brewer, so it's got to keep him organized on what he's working on because he wants to do it all. Um, so we, uh, we got it open. In the meantime, we had said, hey, um, how do we create a place that you know someone like my mom can go that doesn't like beer? So we decided to throw wine into the mix. Then we decided to throw food into the mix, which changed everything. So now we're, uh, we've been open a year. Um, things are going really good, and we just hope to you know, keep moving forward. Hopefully this will be our year to really take it to the next level. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, I've really enjoyed your beers. And uh, I really appreciate you guys and your hospitality. So Absolutely, man. Thank you. So Justin and I decided to go to 8-Bit Brewing today because we really like the name, to be honest with you. And this place, when we looked it up online, had tons of positive reviews, not just for their delicious beer, but also their food. Not to mention, guys, when we talk about our beers, you're going to want to pay close attention to the names of those beers because they're all in reference to different pop culture things and or video game jargon, so see which ones you guys know. Now, let's have some beer. Let's have some beer. So Justin and I just ordered our first beers here at 8-Bit Brewing, and the first beer on my list is the Care Beer Stare. This is a 7.2% IPA and it uses mostly citra hops. That's what pulled my attention initially. Um, I'm picking up on the aroma, you get all the good citrus notes, orange peel, grapefruit, just all, all the good stuff. So I'm really excited to start this whole thing out with this beer. Cheers. I love starting my day with a delicious IPA. This thing is packed with fruity flavor notes. It's solid body all the way throughout. You get real tasty malts that don't overpower anything. It's super well balanced. It's got a little bit of a piney flavor to it as well, but I think that's good because you don't just want a juice bomb with an IPA like this. It's absolutely delicious. All right, guys. My first beer up today is called the Walking Bread. It is their Ginger Dead Man Ale. It comes in at 5.5% and 32 IBUs. It's really dark, not as dark as you would think for a gingerbread, but you know, I'm curious to see what this is like because I've never had a gingerbread beer before. So, cheers. Ooh. First of all, check out the lacing on this cup. It's amazing. The beer taste, regardless, is just fantastic. You're not getting a lot of ginger, like you, you would expect, but what you're getting is all those other gingerbready flavors, the nutmeg, the all the spices that you get from a nutmeg, a little bit of pumpkin-y flavor, but it's really, really delicious. It's one of those winter beers that you would want to have just overall by a fire, maybe making a nice gingerbread house, you'd want to have one of these. Good for the holidays, but good for any time of year. All right, so the next on my list is Fandom of the Hopera. Now this beer, this beer measures in at 8.7%. It also has 102 IBUs, so I'm expecting an extremely bitter beer. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it. 
The only way to find out is to try it. So to be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of this beer. It's a little too bitter for me, believe it or not, even for someone who loves IPAs. Uh, it also has that skunky flavor and aroma to it. Some people dig that, but to me it's just, it's not my deal. I'm a big fan of the citrus, pine, floral notes. This has got that dank, kush, smells like weed. Smells like weed and tastes like weed, kind of. Um, the, the malts are very well balanced in here. It doesn't taste like an 8.7% beer, but what I am tasting, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of. So next we have their Yarmir Lager. It's their India Pale Lager, and it's 6.8% and IBUs of 68. Obviously named after the great hockey great Yarmir Yager, who currently plays for the Fan Florida Panthers. Little fun fact for you. So it looks good, it smells delicious, I can't wait to try it. Cheers. Ooh. So, this is a perfect hybrid beer. If you're looking for that IPA flavor with that l lager lightness, it, it dances across your tongue. There's almost no aftertaste to it. There's a little bit. It lingers, but very slightly. It's almost just comes and goes. It, it, it's very, very light, but it's also very, very delicious. The thing is also being 6.8% 6, 6 in a lager, it's very easy to drink. You're not getting that big punch of hops. And it's also not overly bready and it's not overly malty, so you're not getting a lot of that big body. So it's just really crisp, really clean to drink. And if you're an IPA drinker that wants to drink a lot of them, this is the way to go. So the next on the list is Cyborg Ninja Overhopped. This beer right here measures in at 5.1%. It wasn't on the list, so I'm really excited to try it. It says 86 IBU, so it's pretty up on the uh, bittering scale. Let's see how it tastes. Ooh. Oh. So check this out. This beer in particular, you don't pick up on the hops very much at all. This is all malt. Um, you're getting all the bready qualities, a little bit of toffee. It's biscuity. You do get some of the bitterness, but you're not getting the flavor of the hops, which believe it or not, even as an IPA lover with this beer, I like it. So the next one I'm tasting is the Autobots Roll Stout. It's a chocolate coffee stout, 5.9% and 48 IBUs. So obviously I think you all know where this is coming from, whether you want to fight Megatron or you're just rolling with Bubble Bee. Probably, probably sounds like a good beer to have. Cheers. So you, right away you pick up a, lot, a strong hit of coffee. The chocolate is a very good undertone. It goes down really, really smooth. I don't know if it's nitro or not, but it tastes like it's nitro. I'm pretty sure it is, just looking at that lacing on the glass. It is smooth, it is delicious. I, I would like it to have a little bit more flavor, but because all you're getting is cho coffee and chocolate, you're not getting any little subtle flavors, it's just mostly those two. But if you're looking for something really good, really tasty, and you're a big coffee and chocolate drinker, this is the stout for you. So after treating myself to a few IPAs, I decided to lighten it up a little bit for the second round. This next one up is called Hefe Weapons Guy. This Hefeweizen weighs in at 5.8%. It's only 10 IBU, so it's not gonna be a hoppy beer, which most Hefs aren't. But it should be super mellow. I'm really excited to try it. Cheers. You know, most Hefs that I'm used to, like uh, Widmer or Blue Moon, beers like that, I'm usually used to that thicker, heavier, grainier flavor. This is actually quite light for a Hefenweizen. You definitely are getting those grain flavors out of there, but it's not, it's not really heavy or overpowering. What I'd really like to pair with this is some orange peel. I think it would add a lot to the experience of the beer in itself. What I do really like is the fact that it's light, because typically if I'm gonna be drinking Hefs, I can usually only have one or two, and then I'm, full. 
I, I really can't even drink much more beer. That's usually why I stay away from them. So something like this would be really nice to have at a summer barbecue with a couple orange peels and I could drink them all day. Very delicious beer, very different, but very delicious. So my next beer up is the 8-Bit Light. It's their Blonde Ale. It's 4.8% and 19 IBUs. Just everything you're expecting from a nice Blonde Ale. That good, nice, clean color. A little cloudy, but it looks like it's going to be a really good beer. Really refreshing. Let's see how it is. Cheers. It's that typical Blonde Ale. It, you're getting those nice muted flavors, a very drinkable quality, not a big body, not a lot of hops but it's just overall very light, very clean, not a lot of finish, and just very drinkable. You're getting mm, maybe a little little notes of fl floral and fruit, but nothing overwhelming, nothing that you would say, oh my god, that's blah blah blah, that's this fruit or that, that floral essence, that herb. But it's just, it comes together in a very nice, very drinkable beer. One more thing, one of the owners told us that this beer was their answer to Bud Light or Coors Light. When people come into this bar asking for a Bud Light or a Coors Light or any of those big industrial light beers, this is what they would give them and it is a perfect answer, a perfect compliment and just a great one up to all those beers all together. This next beer I'm really excited about because I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. It's called House Great Joy. One of the really strange things about this beer is it's titled as a Pike's Pale Ale. Now, to be honest with you, I've never heard of that. If you're watching this and you know what a Pike's Pale Ale is, P-Y-K-E, please leave a comment below. I would love to know where that originates from or, or actually what it means in general. Now, this Pale Ale measures in at 5.5%. It's got a beautiful amber color to it, almost red. You can kind of see it. And, I don't know, I'm super stoked to try it. So cheers. Oh. This is smooth, malty, and hoppy. It actually does remind me of a red ale. Uh, not as potent of a body, but it's still full bodied. Lots of good flavor. Man, if you want a beer with good flavor, just solid throughout, and nothing that's gonna overpower your palate, this beer is it. It is delicious. I would love to have this with a really salty meal, like a, like a cheeseburger. Oh my God, this would go so good with food. The best part about this beer is it's only 5.5%. So it's pretty guilt-free. You can have a few of them, and you don't have to worry about getting too tipsy. Next up, this Irish pale ale that 8-Bit does called Do You Even Lift Bra? It comes in at 5.3% and IBUs of 37. So a little bit on the lighter side as far as a pale ale goes, for bitterness goes. For the Irish, being a little bit darker than you would normally expect, but overall it looks really, really delicious. So, slancha. Wow. Okay, you're getting a lot of the, a lot of good hoppiness. It's not overly done. You're just getting a little bit of it on the nose and a little bit on the taste. Not really on the aftertaste. It finishes clean. It has a great body. The color just shows you that it's going to be not overly powerful, but just powerful enough because it is Irish. Come on. So the next beer on my list is American Samu Rye. This is an American brown ale. I'm actually becoming a very big fan of brown ales lately. I think it was after going to Banger Brewing and having that uh, downtown brown on nitro. I think it completely changed my opinion of brown ales and I'm becoming a fan fast. This American Samurai measures in at 6%. One of the things I noticed about this beer when it was being poured is just how dark it is. You have to look twice to know whether or not it's a brown ale or stout. But enough talking, more drinking. Cheers. There is something about a nutty brown ale that is just so refreshing. Especially when it's cold outside, this is probably gonna be my new go-to. It used to be stouts, but the, 
the nutty notes of this just take me to winter time, yet still make me feel nice and warm inside. The malty body matches so well with those nutty flavors. It's smooth throughout. You get flavor from start to finish, and then that finish just slowly slides off. This is a type of beer that I could spend all day drinking and not miss any other beers at all. All right guys, the last beer I'm trying here at 8-Bit Brewing in Murrieta, California is the Winter is Lagery. It's their seasonal winter ale and it weighs in at 5.8%. So whether you're a member of the House of Stark or, you know, just looking for a good brew, this looks like the one for you. Cheers. Ooh. I don't know what it is about this lager. There's a lot of just great winter notes. I can taste a little bit of nutmeg, a little bit, I don't know if it's pine or if it's some other floral thing, but it just reminds you of winter so much. It reminds you of good times around the holidays. It reminds you of try when you tried to take over the Iron Throne and you failed miserably. But this is just an amazing beer. Not overly floral on the scent, not a big body, but it's just good, clean, goes down smooth and just has all those winter flavors that you're looking for. All right guys, I'm down to my final beer tasting and the last beer is called Call of Broody. It weighs in at 4.8% and it's a pale ale. Sounds pretty light. So as a pale ale, I'm kind of excited to try it. We're gonna see what kind of flavors come out. Cheers. Man, there is some flavor hidden in here. I can't put my finger on it. You taste it the whole time. I wanna say it's like orange zest or something, but I'm not getting the citrus. I'm getting just that little hidden flavor. I don't know what it is. I just don't know what it is. What I will say is as a beer, this is super light and refreshing. This would probably be something that I would have at a Super Bowl game or something like that. I wouldn't stick with it the whole time. This would be the type of beer where if you're hanging out with friends, you don't want to get too drunk, and you just want to kick back and have a decent beer. This is probably it right here. For those of you watching, I just want to let you know, there are many reasons why we go to these different breweries and try different beers. You may be a fan of stouts, and that's great. It's great when you find a beer style that you know you like. But when you go to different breweries and you try all their different beers on draft, you actually may be surprised that you'll find something that you really like that doesn't fall in the wheelhouse of your normal everyday beer style. Today, I tried some great IPAs that I liked. And I always like IPAs, so I'm not really surprised. But my favorite beer of the day was that brown ale. And if it wasn't for trying out different breweries and trying everything that they have to offer, I wouldn't have discovered this newfound love for brown ales. So I really implore you to try different beers next time you're out at a brewery or next time you go to a bar. Give it a chance. I guarantee you won't regret it. So originally, when it all started, we had four fermenters and our mash ton, and that was on the other side. And then it was like, business started picking up. When we first opened, we actually ran out of all our beer. We ran out of everything. We had, we opened in December, and it was like January or February, and we had like two beers left, which is like, oh, this is tight. We ran out of all our beer, but it's like the same time, you're like, it's like uh -oh, what, yeah, yeah, what, what happens <laughs> when yeah. we need more beer? So very yeah. quickly, we realized, wow, we're gonna need food more beer, so we bought eight more tanks. Now we have enough beer to, we can actually produce four times the amount we're doing right now. We just don't have the space for all the kegs, so that's something we're working on. So what beers do you have in here right now? So our most popular beer is a Mosaic IPA, a True Brewmance is what it's called. So we have three batches of that done. Oh, that was one of the ones that you were out of, right? Yeah, so. I'll have to yeah, come so back that, and try that. <laughs> that's the one, that's the one up to today is the most popular, that's the one, that's would be the flagship. So. Uh, we have that, we did a, uh, we have another sour. We just ran out of other sours, so we have a sour here. Annie is our anniversary beer, we're coming up on Oh, that. that's Probably the one for the beer. anniversary yeah. release. He did a white stout with some, mm. part of having a brewery, a bunch of coffee 
make, roasters always want to like have their coffee so yeah. we found some cool guys that make killer coffee that's so awesome for, for us we get to have good coffee and use it in our beer uh, we got orange the new half that's a good one oranges in your half <laughs> love bites was our uh it's a chocolate lager that we did for a uh, for um valentine's day last year everyone liked it so we're redoing that and then Chuggernaut, that's our original double IPA, so that one will be back. Chuggernaut. Chuggernaut. So I'd ask you, out of all the beers that you guys have brewed so far, what would you say is your favorite? It's that's a hard question to answer just because like you get so proud of each individual beer, you know, as it comes. Um, I'd say I guess Brewmance. Brewmance is the one that you know, you, you find a beer that you like and you're like, man, like I wish we could make a beer like this and then you do and it becomes popular. It's, other people yeah, feel the, the same way. True Brumance is the beer that like, it's it's an IPA, it's 7.1% 55 IBU, so it's not super bitter, it's very floral, it's got great flavor. If you don't like IPAs, it's a good introductory IPA, but if you do like IPAs, it's got just great flavor, it's personal flavor. So it's like, it's all those beers you can drink on a hot day, out by the pool, and it's like, or you can enjoy it sitting down inside the brewery. It's, it's, oh, it's awesome. guys we had a great time at 8-bit brewing this was a blast Jeff thank you for showing us around and telling us your story we love this place it's super awesome and I'm so excited to come back here later on and try all the amazing beers that you guys are working on for those of you watching if you really enjoyed this video make sure that you like share and subscribe Leave some comments below too and let me know what you want to see on the next episode. But for now, we're just going to say goodbye and we'll see you next time on Let's Have Some Beer.